Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the minister, the Honorable Marquise L. Kimball, coming to you today with a uh, a bit of content that I'm going to share with you uh, because I have made a commitment to uh, releasing the truthful events that have transpired between my company the HCV Distribution Corporation and Associates, uh, myself and State Farm Insurance com uh, uh, Company. Um, there was a lot of terrible, terrible things that transpired that I was told to be quiet and silenced about through what used to be my attorney in regards to uh, jeopardizing uh, what would have, should have, could have, would have been bad faith with all of the evidence that you could possibly ask for in regards to what transpired, including the recorded interviews of the people that were involved in this complete atrocity that happened to me at the hands of State Farm. And listen, I'm not going to stop. Just like you took the time to publish negative false allegations about me and publish this to the public, State Farm, I'm going to spend the same amount of effort, energy, resources, connections, that I have as a minister, as a business owner, and all of my colleagues that I'm connected to, and my voice will be heard of what you did and how you did it. Now you were, so, uh, I don't know what, how you were, I don't know what your thinking was by writing it all down of what you did. But to even go a, start, a step further to make derogatory comments about my appearance, my demeanor, my clothing, and you're supposed to be my insurance company, you painted a picture about me, made up false allegations about me, illegally denied a legitimate claim that my corporation and my company experienced, immediately investigated me as a criminal instead of the victim when you had full-fledged proof that I had not been in the vicinity of that store for at least 12 days before the incident transpired. From the beginning, the original judge could not take the case for whatever reason, so he had to sign off the case. Go figure, we're in Fulton County. I don't know, but that's what happened. And because he signed off on the case, guess what? It delayed our case for eight entire months while they figured out how to get another judge. I'm a little upset about this judge that came in because everybody got to talk to him about this case except me. And in the day before I was supposed to show up in court and get my day to, to, to explain to the jury what these guys did to me, somehow the court date disappeared after waiting an entire year in my financial life being turned upside down, you all published false allegations about a person that who has been an official, efficient marriage efficient minister registered with the state. I've held the office of a notary for now eight plus years of my life. And you don't get to say these false allegations about a guy that doesn't have a record. That's you defamed and lied. Because if you were not lying, then where are the charges against me for insurance fraud? You didn't bring them because you don't have any evidence. 
and I'm sick of playing your game. I was not treated fairly. I did not have due process. From the day that the police, Swanton police, came into that store, I was fingerprinted and I was interrogated. I was separated from my sister and we were treated just for what, like what you see cops on TV when they take them in the room, trying to get us to implicate that we had something to do with the business being broken into. Nobody I knew hung out in Swanton at five o'clock in the morning, you better believe it. There wasn't many people that looked like this in Swanton. And the ones that I hung out with were my wife and my sister. We were nowhere in the vicinity of that store, but the police took an hour to show up. Who is, who's, are we just gonna sit back and smell the coffee beans like this doesn't sound fishy or look fishy? How do I get investigated when you know that the police documented that they showed up an hour late? My store notified them at 645. They knew full fledged where my store was. It was directly next to the most popular pizza place in downtown Swanton, called Tano's. I'm not ridiculous. My whole career was built in that town. I knew all of the big wins. I even knew the mayor on a conversational base. You damaged that and you ruined my customer base. And I will not stop until I can be for sure that you will see me in court because I've got the evidence of what you did to me. And this cannot be tolerated from any company, any business at all. We both signed that we were swearing into the efficient understanding that we would uphold the United States Constitution, I know you did. In short, you had to. I ran, I was an F&I manager for eight years, seven years, and I was a damn good one. So I know you had to have insurance, and I know that you signed and you swore in something concerning the Constitution. I know that I had to. In fact, you scamified scams, it's right here. And you cannot become a public officiant with a criminal background. So you don't get to tell the public or publish on paper that Mr. Marquise Kimball has something to do with breaking in his own business and get away with that. You don't get to do that. I have a clean driving record. I have a clean background history. You do not get to make me a criminal and publish this information and then use that as the reason of why you deny my legitimate insurance claim. That was responsible for by a hate crime. Let's not forget what was sprayed all over my business walls. Do I have to say it? Probably not. You've seen the pictures. We're talking about a town that did not have many of this. I don't care how you want to slice the pie. Take it however you want. I was a highly respected individual in that town. A lot of people got their cars from me and then they got CBD medication from me. And these guys robbed all of that from me, including my building. And you allowed me to get robbed twice under your insurance policy. And you denied it. Nobody, it's not going away that easy. Talk to me nice or I will not stop until I complain to every single government entity I possibly can until I can't anymore. And so will all of my associates and everybody I'm connected to and all of the people that I'm leadership with, I will not stop until you and what you did to me is made public. The jewelry that you claimed and said I came into the place with is the same jewelry I have on today, the same jewelry I wore for the last four years. Don't paint it on the paper like I'm a drug dealer. That's what you did.
If you don't want to call me drunk, whatever you want to say. You said I was braggadocious. I showed up with a loud tie with a bunch of jewelry on. What is that? And what did that have to do with anything concerning this case? And it was your attorney that did this and published it. And I was told to be quiet about this an entire year until y'all scamified and got out of, out of coming to court. I don't even understand that for the life of me. If I'm the plaintiff, how do you just get out of coming to court? How? I'm the one that has to prove what you did and you somehow did not go come to, have to come to court and neither did I. And it was because of something you and the judge signed upon and I didn't even know about any of this. This was not the same fair justice. And we're going back at this again. And I'm going to get every single thing. Matter of fact, it's already in motion. I've contacted the Civil Rights Commission. I've contacted the Department of Insurance. I've contacted every single government news station you can even think of locally and nationally. They've got the pictures. They've got the emails. And we're going to stop playing these games. You will pay for destroying my professional name, image, and character. I worked too damn hard for it, and you were supposed to be my insurance company. You let me down. Your estate's scam is what you are. And that's what you will always be, because I can't believe that that was what you denied me for. And you had no evidence of this. You don't get to call me a criminal. You don't have proof of that. What kind of planet is that? You know how I many people go to jail for defamation of character and defaming people's name and get sued millions of dollars because of that stuff right there? You know how I many things I'm involved in and things I've done in my life? You don't get to rob that from me. You've already taken my customers. You've already stolen my bills, business building from me. You will not take my professional name, which you have already done. And people are looking at me funny now. Don't want to do business with me anymore. Don't looking at me with side eyes because of what you said. And if you want to say you didn't say it, well, then why'd you publish it? Because it's in the docs. Everything I'm saying is in the docs. You can read it just like I can. And every one of those people that we, we questioned that came to the deposition where we questioned you, why did you all say you want to make sure you see your answers again if this goes to court before you go, before it, if, you, if, this, if, the, if it goes to court, you want to re recheck your, because you were lying. A lot of laws were broken. A lot more things happened throughout this thing. I just don't want to go into detail, but you will see it in the complaint. HCV Distribution Corporation is a corporation that stands alone on its own, which has partners, and we're going to proceed after uh, State Farm as a corporation, and I demand State Farm to replicate Mr. Marquise Kimball, who they destroyed. We've got the evidence. We've got the tapes. We've got the footage. You wrote it down. You don't get to do that. I worked in lending institutions. You cannot do that. I don't care how you want to slice that pie. You profiled me. And you put that down on paper and you had no right to do so. I didn't come to court with anything else that I've not worn for the last 20 years of my life. Look me up. I'm on every social media place you can think of. Go back eight years and look me up at the dealership. Look at the clothes I wore. I walked in there with a Donald Trump style suit on. And this guy was angry because I was so sharp he could not trip me up. That was what it was about. Let's stop playing games now. These are things that my scamified attorney was supposed to be saying, and now his ass is out of the mix. And I'm saying it. I'm sick of it. There's no more games here. I'm smart enough to tell a jury what you did. I've got the evidence, and we're going to take this thing as far as we possibly can. 
It's not even about the money with me anymore. You already took the business. I want you to pay for what you did to an honest man who spent 40 years of his life living the right way, doing the right things. And you get to say that I was involved in insurance fraud? Oh, buddy, no, it doesn't end there. Because if I was, you better have some evidence and you should have been charging me with criminal charges. You didn't do that because you have no evidence of such. You just wanted to deny my claim. You waited an entire year. You prolonged it. You stalled it. You did everything you could. And then you just made up this reason. And you put my appearance in there. And that was part of your determination of why. Or else you wouldn't have never wrote that down. I'm not stupid. You got to pay for that. So at the end of the day, this is the content for today. I want to share with you all the official letter that was shared or sent off to uh, the Ohio uh, uh, um, uh, commissions. I want you guys to see this because this is when if you guys ever have a problem especially my brown and 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 and, and brother and, and black sisters that look like me y'all know what i mean i'm not trying to be racist i'm not trying to irritate nobody just hear what i'm saying because nobody can say anything about the treatment that we as this color people receive but us i don't give a damn what you want to try to put on the same playing field you cannot Put what we experience as a people on a day-to-day -day basis up against any other thing in this that I can only there's nothing you can compare to it. So if you're not this, then don't tell me anything about mistreatment, profiling. You got a guy like me who's never ever had a charge in his life and still can be made a criminal on paper by an insurance company. So don't tell me. That we, we, the scores are evened out. At one point in time, the whole entire community disconnected from me, including the dealership I worked at all those years. I was that connected in the community at one point. And then all of a sudden, just like that, starting with the mayor who I had talked to on the Facebook, I've got the conversation. Don't think I'm stupid. My mother taught me well. So I, we can go as deep as you want to go with this situation. But I've got the conversations of myself and the mayor having in a conversation with him telling me happy birthday. The mayor used to watch me sing karaoke and play my instruments on my Facebook page. Yes more than twice a week at times. So he also stopped in my business to say, hey, a few times a month, maybe some, maybe once or twice a month, he stopped in. We cut the damn ribbon in front of the store and it was placed in the Fulton County newspaper all over Fulton County. So I want you to understand where I was at one point with this community until I arrived at my store and then I was immediately told I needed to be fingerprinted, Swanton PD, all of it sounded, felt weird. It was, me and my sister were terrified. We've never been in a situation like that. You imagine what was going through my mind? I didn't know what was, I was just trying to follow the rules. Come to find out, no, I didn't have to do any of that. You idiots, I was the victim. What are you doing to me? Why are you uh, treating me like this? Why am I being put up against my sister trying to be implicated like we had something to do with this crime? You swan. And I told the mayor, and I've got the conversations. So once again, the things that the my attorney, scam attorney, 
sack the Sylvia didn't save for the last year. I've got the real stuff. And I've got the full conversations that things that people don't know that have went on. And this is why I can prove to you that this was racially motivated. Period. Point blank. You can be mad at me all you want. If you're not racist, then I'm not talking to you. But you know who you are in Swanton that did not stand up for me. We had 100 five-star Google ratings in the Fort County area. All of our customers were our customers that lived in the same area as the store. So don't you tell me that fat face on live that we just all of a sudden lost our customer count. You won't be able to tell me that. And so at the end of the day, I want the community to know every step of the way that this here guy is going to take to ensure that his rights and justice is served. Right now, I was wronged on several occasions and I never even got my day in court. I never even got to show up and say, why am I here? I thought I was the one bringing the action. What type of a scam is this? No, we're gonna do this again. And this time, every other action that did not get mentioned or every detail is going to be put into this complaint. We may have to bring a series of complaints because there were steps missed and information that you need to know on what happened to me in this community, how we lost the building what the building owner was supposed to sign, proving that she was talking to my insurance company illegally about my information. She agrees to sign it, so I sign off the building so she can get the building back, and then somehow just decides she's not gonna sign the affidavit. All of this is documented. Doesn't show up for court. How does this happen when I know if I had a court date I missed it. Oh, it would have been a different story. Somehow that scam got that building back and got to sell it. Although she was went wrong with what she did and how she did it. And she was our whole evidence conversation piece to prove that she was talking to my agent. And guess what they both said at the depositions that were recorded? They, yeah, they were having conversations on the phone. And you know what his scamified answer was? He said he called her to see if the building that was that I was in wasn't for sale. Why would an insurance agent call the land contract holder of a building to see if a man stop with the scam scams? Jeff Lambert, you could have made this better. You helped this situation. So it's not over. So now I'm going to read to you, as I stated before, what you need to do if in a situation that you find yourself in, if it is like this, I'm getting some very well, uh, great information that I'm learning and also being taught to me along the way. Man, I just can't believe some of the things that we actually do that we don't need to do. Most, what, what am I trying to say? Let me talk to y'all real today. Let's just, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna play none of these games. There's things that we as a people sometimes think that we just gotta have and we need to do it because it's what traditional says to us. And we don't understand some of the rights that this constitution that I signed uh, 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 to witness that I would uphold states and the constitution gives you and I rights and so at the end of the day if you are in a situation where you are faced with some discrimination uh, discriminatory things things anything that you feel like is going against that constitution you have every right 
to seek out these governmental sources that are in place that supposedly are to govern said institution. So what am I saying to you? Everybody has a boss. I'm just going to say it like that because my mama used to say it to me all the time. And it didn't get into my head until I was about 17. And then I finally understood what she said. Everybody has a boss. I don't care what. If they're an institution providing to the community a service, they have a boss. And at this point in time, State Farm has done everything in their power to show that they do not care about anything concerning Marquis Kimball, HCV Distribution Corporation, what it's done to my company, what it's done to my family, what it's done to my finances, what you've done to my professional name, how you've destroyed my customers. I used to have customers that I could text at the fingertips. There are customers that we lost because of this mess. Because they started wondering why is it, why are they still not open yet? And then I had to go to the community and say, State Farm chose to decide for whatever reason to investigate me. I've never been in trouble. Fine, I'll jump through your hoops. And I gave you all more documents than you required to the point where you couldn't even keep up with the documents. You got lost with the documents. So you're telling me that you made a determination about my finances and we don't even know if you got all the full documents. Cause you got lost in the sauce. Remember that early on? See, I had another attorney. We got all this documented in email. You got lost in the sauce. I, I, I knew what to do when it's insurance asking for stuff. I gave you all 4,200 documents. You don't like that, but it's the truth. Everything you asked me for concerning that my business, I gave it to you. I sat through a three-hour deposition on my birthday with Mr. Lonnie Scamify Johnson. And then I sat through a six-hour interrogation style where I, you got to tear me apart to see if I would fall apart, six hours, all to find out you then published after that meeting. I showed up with a blue suit on with a loud tie and a bunch of jewelry, and I was braggadocious. You know what you did, but you don't get to do that to a person. You get away with that with people that have already been in the system and they've been in trouble and all of that, but you don't get away with that with somebody who's clean and never does. I was at home in bed with my wife. You guys got my phone records. You asked me for every single thing. You made me go back 20 years in my marriage and answer questions. And I never missed a beat. And you use that as a reason to deny my corporation and Marquis Kimball. And you destroy both in the midst. No, no, no. And every single chance I get, every day, until we're in court. And I don't give a damn if I'm standing up in front of whatever attorney you want to put up. Nobody's going to tell me what happened to me anymore. I know what happened to me. And like Judge Judy said, the Honorable Judge Judy Shiloh always says, if you always tell the truth, you don't have to remember. And the only story that hasn't changed this whole time is mine. You don't believe me? Go listen to the recorded tapes of the recordings of us with McSurley and Lambert. Look at them turning red and jumping all over and fumbling and jumbling. You're lying. You're trying to cover your ass and you did it. And my attorney let it slide. Zach, did you get paid, Mr. Silvis? What attorney just, just, just does that? 
No kind of just what attorney does that? And you said to me and a couple of my associates several times, Mr. De Silva's, that you vehemently disagreed with the judge's decision and you felt like the judge made the wrong decision. So why didn't you file an appeal for us? That would have been the next course of action. If you were so sure about your disagreement, that would have been the next course of action, sir. No, you let the date expire so we could not appeal it. Now, I don't want you at all. I don't want you near me. Don't even talk to nobody concerning my company anymore. If anybody's going to tell what happened anymore, it's going to be me and my representatives. I've got partners and there will be people in place that will be ready to talk to you, State Farm. But until then, I want your boss. And then I want, I want to go as far as I can if I've got to go to the Ohio Supreme Court. You cannot do this to people. We were told st the strict rules when I was dealing with the banks, the finance manager, we had rules that we had to follow we, when it came to an appearance of a person. And you don't get to write that kind of a picture, buddy. You could have said I had a suit on, but don't make it look like I showed up like Nino Brown. You are a liar. You said a bunch of jewelry, three or four necklaces. I've never done that before. And I damn sure wouldn't show up to court like that. You're a liar. We'll pay for that. That's it.